The average altitude in the Karakoram area is 6,000 meters. The geology of the area is very complex and geologically active. The road construction crew will face both unprecedented engineering challenges and difficult natural conditions. But Chinese engineers have accumulated nearly half a century of knowledge and experience and are ready to build one of the world's highest roads under these extreme conditions. The normal tranquility of the Karakoram area in northern Pakistan was broken in September 2008 by the cacophony of road machinery beginning work on the Karakoram Highway Project. The Chinese construction team reached Pakistan four months ago after crossing the Kunjarab Pass. They arrived at the starting point for the project to widen and repair the Karakoram Highway. But before the project could begin, Bridge Gilgit, a vital link in the project, was washed away by flood. It took 83 days to reopen the bridge over the river before the project could really begin. The project will work on the highway between the Kunjarab Pass at the border between China and Pakistan and the Raikot Bridge. This 335 kilometer stretch is the most seriously damaged part of the highway, where the complex geological features present many unexpected challenges. Pakistani engineer Sargardan is being lowered on ropes into the 46 meter deep valley to investigate geological conditions for the foundation of the earth retaining wall. He has to watch his footing while looking out for falling rocks above. Any misstep could prove disastrous. This was very dangerous, very, very deep. But uh, before I don't say. Uh, uh. The main purpose of the project is to widen the existing road. But most of the project is on the mountain sides. Where one side of the road is crumbling mountain and the other steep drops and deep mountain streams. Widening the road will require either removing part of the mountain or building up the cliffside to make a level surface. Either way will require many earth retaining walls, otherwise the road will not last very long. Tanchang, 
就是作为一个防护的一个手段的话，它工程当中都有。但是这个项目比较特殊，就是它这个量非常的大，结果包括我们上下板墙加起来可能有将近一百万方的这个量。这在一般的工程当中是很少见的。他这前面这些直线推到这，你说他现在只是把外面的膜支上。Jin Feng is an engineer working on section B of the project. He runs into a thorny issue at section K615. The mountain sides here are not very stable. The road is often threatened by mudslides in warm weather as the snow higher up melts. Here, the engineers designed an 18-meter tall bridge away from the mountainside, and any debris from a mudslide will pass under the bridge. Mudslides would hit the foundation of the other side of the highway very hard and eventually destroy it. After conducting several studies, the project headquarters decides to build an earth retaining wall to protect the foundation. Jin Feng then has to face the challenge of first building an earth retaining wall 14 meters from the road foundation that comes up to the level of the highway, then filling the space between the wall and the road foundation. Because it's really deep, and the depth is quite big. It's also a plain surface surface. How to use the plain surface, and how to use the surface surface, and how to use the surface surface. The depth is quite big, and the depth is quite big. It's quite difficult to consider. The wall will need to be as tall as a 15-story building, and the space between the road and the wall will require about 10,000 cubic meters of fill. This will require a truck with a 15 cubic meter capacity working 90-some consecutive days to bring it to the site. Moreover, the huge amount of fill will exert a strong pressure against the retaining wall. To reduce the amount of fill and thereby reduce pressure on the wall, engineers decide to make the wall slant towards the road. It will take over one million cubic meters of material to build all the retaining walls in the project, equivalent to building a 100-kilometer section of the Great Wall. But the retaining walls alone wouldn't be enough to solve all the safety concerns on the road. The engineers have to resort to even more reliable methods to cope with the complicated geological conditions in the area. Chen Xiaoqing is a geologist with the Chengdu Institute of Mountain Hazards and Environment of the Chinese Academy of Science. The China Road and Bridge Corporation commissioned him to make a detailed study of the mountains on the two sides of the highway. Despite his long geological experience, the extensive layer of loose sand on the slopes surprises him. In other roads, you can see it's very rare. If you have it, it's very small. The size is very small. The size is very small. The size is very small. It's 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 very small. The 
Capricorn Range was formed hundreds of millions of years ago by upward movement of the Earth's crust. The force of this movement fused different substances together, forming peaks with layers composed of different types of rock. At high temperatures, the layers expand at different rates. This causes little pieces of rock to break off, forming an unstable layer. The sides of these slopes are very unstable. Rocks often come rolling down the slope unexpectedly, which could be disastrous to passing vehicles or people. Engineers decided to employ a unique architectural structure known as open cut tunnel. Such a structure will ensure the safety of both people and their vehicles. The inverted arch must be buried two meters deep so the tunnel can handle the required capacity. This means explosives must be used. But there is a danger that explosions will lead to deterioration of the unstable slopes. Zhu Ribo is a detonation engineer with over a decade of experience. He made a number of tests to determine the depth, direction, and amount of the charge that would cause the least disturbance to the unstable slopes. In the end, he decided to use just enough explosives to loosen the rock. This type of blast only makes cracks in the rock without blowing pieces into the air. This keeps disturbance of the unstable slopes to a minimum. There are 18 sections that will require the construction of open cut tunnels on the route tunnels will ensure that the entire highway is passable throughout the year. One morning in September 2012, Shi Yanghua, in charge of Section D, arrived at the Kunjurab Pass to check some special soil layers, as he has done every few days over the past four years. The locals described the Kunjurab as snow-covered mountains, the soil in this area is completely transformed by the cold weather. The soil along the four kilometer stretch from Kunjarab to Pakistan is different from that in other parts of the route. This kind of frozen soil is a real headache for engineers around the world.
when the temperature drops below freezing, the soil and rocks contain a large amount of ice crystals. This type of soil is very sensitive to changes in temperature. When the temperature drops, ice in the soil can cause it to swell, making the soil surface more uneven. When temperature rises above freezing, causing the ice in the soil to melt, the water drains through small cracks in the soil, causing the surface to sink. Shu has been making detailed records over the past four years when the soil freezes and thaws. The freezing and thawing soil presents a tough challenge to road construction. Just a few years after the original highway was opened to traffic in the late 1980s, the section built on frozen soil started seriously deteriorating. After two years of experimenting, Shi Yahua finally found a solution. We have created a soil insulation and then we put a soil insulation on the surface. The soil insulation can be about a meter. In this area, the soil insulation can be very small. The geogrid used in this project is a type of strong specially processed steel netting. Shi added it to the top layer of the road foundation to greatly reduce cracking of the road surface due to deformation of lower layers. When we cut it, we cut it with a strong steel netting, but it is very strong to the weight of it. Through this concrete wall, we cut it with a strong steel netting. It will prevent it from affecting the road surface, which will be reduced by cutting it. The cold weather is causing huge difficulties for the project, as well as placing high demands on the materials used. Liang Hongguo is a test engineer for the project. He's been conducting tests for two years to find a suitable asphalt formula. The climate in the Karakoram area exhibits extreme variation. With the high and low temperatures varying by as much as 70 degrees Celsius. This places a very high demand on the asphalt. Roads are generally composed of a foundation, roadbed, and surface layer. The surface layer is usually a combination of asphalt and concrete. Although the layer of crushed rock helps keep the road surface dry and helps prevent freezing, the great difference between summer and winter temperatures means that the asphalt used must also be well suited to the job. When the asphalt gets soft in the hot summertime, heavily loaded trucks can then make deep ruts in the road. Low temperatures in winter can often cause the asphalt surface to crack. The asphalt used must be resistant to both low and high temperatures. Liang Hongguo has been monitoring and recording the temperature changes along this section of the road for several years. According to the 
捐取沥青那个原则，力争保证这个工程所选取的沥青能满足当地的气候和交通的要求。Liang's team continually adjusted the asphalt until they worked out the ideal formula for the high altitude road. As of the end of 2009, the Chinese team had been in this mountainous area of Pakistan for two years. They were hit by floods, mudslides and avalanches while they were there. But a brand new road is emerging that winds around the area's tall mountains and deep canyons. As Ye returned to the main camp on the last day of the year, he reflected on the last two years. The project was already 30% complete, well ahead of schedule. Unfortunately, the clouds didn't bring them good luck. Ye's team doesn't yet know that they will soon be facing an unprecedented disaster. A sudden catastrophe puts their lives in danger and ruins their dream. The Chinese team will have to overcome severe challenges to complete work and bring hope to the people of the deep mountains. Please join us for part three of Rebuilding the Terraform Island.